Thanks, Chris, for the introduction. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. I am Nishtha Madan, and I am going to be talking about our work on navigating the structured what if spaces, counterfactual generation via structured diffusion. And this work is in collaboration with my colleague, Sh Professor Shrikanta Vedithur. And uh, this work is a part of my PhD thesis at IIT Delhi. Currently, I am a staff research scientist at IBM Research. Okay, so starting with uh, deep learning models. So all of us interact with deep learning models. We interact with chat GPT. We interact with machine translation models. We interact with decision-making models and specifically talking about decision-making models. Uh, there are a lot of models that are very, key, that are key applications in our day-to-day -day lives, for instance, we use outputs from a loan classifier. We use, uh, uh, high, for our hiring decisions, we use these models and, and other important decision-making uh, um, applications. So I'll just drill deeper into the decision-making applications. And here we have taken an example of a loan decision classifier. And, uh, what, uh, and I'll just lay out the task here. So the task here is that given attributes of uh, of a person, I want to decide whether that person should be granted a loan versus not. Okay, so there are a lot of applications, uh, you know, and there are a lot of banking uh, systems which have these deployed applications. And here, depending on the age of the person, the education, the marital status, the occupation, race, gender, and income there is a certain decision that gets taken. Okay, so now if the loan gets accepted, everybody is happy. But in the case that, you know, somebody does not get the loan. So what do we do about that? So first thing is, what should be done to, why, first of all, okay, why was the loan rejected? Okay, I should get more visibility into that question. Then the second question is, what, what, things should I change in order to get my loan accepted? So that's the second question, okay. And, and there are uh, lines of research which look at both of these questions independently. The first one is, you know, generating explanations for different classifiers or for different models. And the second one is more towards action recourse. So what actions can I take in order to obtain a certain decision, all right? Okay, so one way that people have tried to solve this is by generating counterfactual explanations. Okay, what is a counterfactual explanation? Given an input, you give that input to a model, you get a certain decision. Okay, that's, that's a normal uh, decision-making process. Now, what is a counterfactual explanation is, what is the minimal change that I can do in my input in order to obtain a desired decision? So, if I refer to the above example, the desired decision was that my loan should get approved and, uh, and the decision was that it got rejected. So what should I change in my input attributes in order to get the desired outcome? Okay, so this is a counterfactual explanation. Now the second natural question is how can we generate these counterfactuals? And uh, you know, our work contributes to that. Uh, okay, so let's try to understand this a bit more. So this is a decision boundary and the label zero and the label one. So you have your input in a certain region of label zero. And what you want to do is you want to perturb the input sample minimally in order to make the label different. Okay, so in this case, you see that the counterfactual that is being generated is in very close proximity to the input and also it has changed label. Okay, so, okay, so now moving on. Okay, here you see a blue boundary, which is the data density of your training samples. Now, what we want to also do is, and, and what existing counterfactual methods fail to do is, yes, they try to generate a sample which changes the label, which is in close proximity to your input sample, but that does not conform to your data distribution. So, so what is what does it lead us to? The samples that get generated are often not plausible. So in some of the cases, we've also seen examples where you know things have been changed from 
uh, husband, the relationship has been changed to divorced and, and the, uh, the relationship has been changed to husband and, and marital status is changed to divorce. So that does not make sense. So what we want to do is, if we are moving more towards automation or automatically generating these explanations, we also want to make sure that these are plausible and not, you know, uh, and the current methods in counterfactual generation, they produce the desired label, but the generations are often not plausible. Okay, so SCD is, SCD is a method that we propose in the paper, uh, which is called Structured Counterfactual Diffuser. And the key uh, focus of this work is to produce counterfactuals which are plausible in nature. Okay, so that's the key property that we focus on in addition to other properties that keeping counterfactuals in close proximity, generating diverse counterfactuals have higher validity and so on, which I'm going to talk about uh, in further slides. Okay, so how do we, uh, how does SCD work? Okay, so we uh, build up, uh, we use diffusion modeling to generate the samples and the space that we are dealing here is structured data, uh, the tabular data. Okay, and uh, here I'm just taking an example that, you know, starting, how does diffusion modeling work? So we start from pure noise and we try to generate and try to reconstruct the original sample, okay, through diffusion modeling. Now here, what if we have a guided generation here? So what I mean by guided generation is at the denoising step of the diffusion LM, what if we add a gradient of a classifier, okay. So now, uh, as an input, why can't we use the tabular embeddings? And the second step is, why can't we use the decision-making model? So referring to the decision-making model that I have been talking about earlier, we had been looking at loan application process. So there, if we can have a gradient flowing uh, at the denoising step, and here, if we can encode the tabular data, and then you know do the follow the diffusion steps and then do that one step denoising to generate the expected counterfactual example which now has a changed label and which is also preserving the proximity which is also in the pro close proximity so proximity is ensured by the diffusion model and the steerability or the change in label is ensured by this uh, gradient of the classifier Okay, so now let's look at the architecture diagram in a bit more detail. So let's say we start from the input instance where, you know, there was a certain gender, age, education, and status, and we encode this tabular data uh, uh, to get the tabular embeddings. Now, and this is the end-to-end -end architecture of how we sample each counterfactual. Okay, so now when, once we have them encoded, uh, we go through zeta, we start with noise sample and we try to reconstruct the original sample. And then at the denoising phase, we add the gradient of black box model. And this was, let's say that, you know, I, I wanted to get a certain label, which is Y prime. And then that's what I, I want to flow the gradient for that. And then, you know, we want to sample a corresponding Z naught uh, at the end of it and then we want to decode it. So the input instance had a certain label. Now the counterfactual instance has a different label and essentially we are able to generate different counterfactuals. Okay, so let's look at some of the qualitative results. Uh, and let's first look at the input here. So the input was, you know, there was a certain age, 39, work class as state government and education as bachelors. Marital status, occupation and relationship, race, gender, hours per week, and country. Okay, so let's first look at the one of the method, one of the state of the art counterfactual generation generator, which is called Dice. Okay, so when we try to work with Dice, we could see that although it produces, it's able to generate counterfactuals. Basically, it's able to change the label of the input instance, but the kind of counterfactuals being generated are very implausible. So in this case, if you see, the marital status says divorced and relationship is husband, which is actually implausible. And uh, similarly, if you look at the examples, samples generated by SCD uh, in our case, so 
uh, you know the marital status is married civil spouse and relationship is wife and the gender was female similarly there was another sample in which the gender was male and then the marital status is married civil spouse and the relationship was husband so what what we could do through this method was the generations that we had were plausible and by the way these are not cherry picked samples these are like very random samples generated by sct Okay, so let's look at quantitative uh, results. So there are four metrics that we evaluate our model against. Okay, the key metric is plausibility. And plausibility is basically negative log likelihood of a GRU function. And here, low plausibility means that, you know, uh, it low, low is better. And what we observe here is that SCD, which is our model, is able to have good plausibility by also maintaining proximity, high proximity, diversity, and validity of the other baselines across all the data sets that we have experimented with. And proximity is basically a measure of how close is the counterfactual that you generated with the input sample. Diversity is, let's say you sampled like five counterfactuals, you want to make sure that these five are different from each other, not exact replicas of each other and that's where we measure how diverse are the counterfactuals that we are generating validity is basically measuring that in how many cases are you able to flip the label so basically in how many cases you could generate counterfactuals and this can be dealt at uh, you know post processing phase where we just filter out the only counterfactuals uh, only flips that we generated so we are able to uh, generate good plausible counterfactuals through the diffusion process okay so let me come to conclusion so in this paper we propose the first counterfactual generation method for tabular data that respects the underlying data distribution and we also develop methods leveraging diffusion and VAEs to incorporate the notion of plausibility in counterfactual generation. And the third point is we show significant strides in plausibility score without compromising other desiderata.